Hey guys, welcome to Dirt Gear TV. Today we're going to be taking a look at a go-kart centrifugal clutch system and seeing what modifications we can make to get the maximum performance out of our go-kart clutch. So if this is your first time to Dirt Gear TV, you may want to check out our video library because we've got some really cool stuff in there. For example, Squirt, our Mitsubishi Mirage powered dune buggy with a manual stick shift. That was a fun project and you can watch the entire build series in our videos below. Now before we get into our performance clutch modifications, I want to let you guys know I've got this spare 14 tooth clutch here that I'm going to be giving away to one of you. This will fit a 1 inch or it'll fit a 7 8 shaft. It's a spare. I don't need it. So if any of you are in need for a new clutch, here's all you have to do. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel and then just leave a brief comment down below of what you'd be using this for. Is it for a go-kart? Is it for a mini bike? A scooter? Or it could just be as simple as Predator Engine. And then I'm going to randomly select one of the comments below to send the clutch to. All right, now it's time to get on to our performance upgrades to our clutch. Now you guys may have noticed in the last video that the Rascal was struggling to get up to speed just a little bit when I was in it and it had a lot of weight on it. Okay, so here is the gearing setup for our 79cc powered Rascal cart. Now whenever we talk about performance on go-karts, mini bikes, any small project that's utilizing Predator with a friction clutch, in terms of performance, the first thing that you're gonna wanna look at is the clutch itself. That's one of the biggest things when it comes to performance on these small engine vehicles. So we're going to see how we can make some free performance gains on this machine by just adjusting and changing some things within our clutching system. Now when you take your clutch apart, you're gonna have six shoes that are gonna be lined up like what you see here. Now the first thing that I like to do with these is you're going to remove three of the clutch shoes. You're going to remove the ones that are sitting over the top of this solid piece here of the back plate. You don't wanna remove the shoes that are over this part of the back plate where there's a gap here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is mark these and then you're just going to take a bandsaw or some other type of saw and you want to cut these pieces right down the middle in half. Now, what I like to do is once I get these pieces cut into half, I like to just take a grinder and I like to put just a tiny little bevel on the corners here so they're not too sharp because one thing you don't want is for sharp edges to get hung up on this back plate. So what I did in my case before I cut these in half is I just marked these with a pencil this says two, two, because you want to keep those parts that are meant to be together, you want to keep them together. Now guys, there are two ways that you can increase the performance of your spring. Number one, and what I've already done with this spring, is I've actually cut a couple of loops out of this spring to increase the tension. When you clip yours together stock, you should be able to take the spring, especially once you've trimmed down your shoes, and you should be able to put your spring easily back into and around those clutch shoes without much resistance. So what I would recommend is you do this one link at a time. Now keep in mind guys, this has already been cut down significantly. I think I cut three loops out of this one. So as you can see, it's very difficult to get that spring into place. From stock, it will not be very difficult to get your spring around all of the shoes. But what you wanna do is you wanna to try to avoid cutting this thing down so far that you're having the problem that I'm having, where it's very difficult to get it around all of our shoes. So I probably cut this down one link too many. Now, if for some reason you do cut this down too far and you're having trouble like I'm having trouble getting the spring back into position, don't panic because you can order just these springs by themselves. Which brings us to the second part of the performance upgrade here. Now, if you really want to get as much performance as you can from your stock clutch, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to actually order a replacement spring entirely. And you can get these springs in different stiffnesses. Now, this particular spring, this is a Max Tour clutch spring. This is their black spring. They have these in different colors and that correlates to different RPMs which these will engage in. They're black being the stiffest, which means you're gonna have the highest RPM engagement. I believe the black is rated for 3,200 RPM. Now, 
that's going to be your highest engagement for these type of clutches. You can try the black spring, but I wouldn't recommend going immediately with their highest engagement clutches unless you're prepared to do some other modifications to your Predator engine, your clone engine, because generally if you're using a stock engine, they're going to have more torque down low in the RPM band and they're not necessarily going to be turning at high RPM to engage these clutches. So you may want to start with a lower engagement clutch and work your way up to the black spring if necessary as you add performance upgrades to your engine. I do intend on doing all of the performance upgrades to our little 79cc Predator, so I'm going to go immediately with the black spring. And we're going to get this down into place. Even though the spring wants to pop all these shoes loose, there's quite a bit of play that's still left inside this. That's a good indication that you can take a length or two out of your spring to get it down to a better, tighter fit. So we're going to take a little bit out of this thing. And again, you can do this with your stock spring if you want to do a free modification. Everything that I'm showing you can be done for free. So my stock spring is a good three or four loops shorter than this length of spring here. So that tells me I've got a little ways to go where I can take this thing down. You can start with one if you really want to be cautious, but I'm going to go with two because I know already about how much length I need. Okay, so this is probably going to be as far as I want to go with this black spring. You can see it's about one loop longer than what the spring is, the stock spring that I trimmed down. And because I know this stock spring is really hard to get into position, I'm going to leave this thing a little extra long. If you're cutting it down, just make sure that your loops are closed enough so you should have one that's slightly open. Don't trim the open side. I always recommend you trim the closed side so that way you can pinch down the closed side and you know that you're not cutting it in a way that it's going to come apart. Let's see if we can get this thing into position here. I'm not completely confident, but we're going to try our best. <laughs> There is no slop, there's no play. Right now, I'm putting tension on all of these clutch shoes and I can feel there's just a little bit of resistance from that spring. That's exactly what you want. That's a perfect length of spring when you've got no slop. See, I can't move these shoes whatsoever, but at the same time, they're not completely busting out the minute I take my hand off it. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. Frustrating. So let's go find that shoe. So that's exactly why you want to make sure that you're not cutting these springs down too far. It may take one or two tries here, but we will get it. And really the best thing to do would be to maybe get a screwdriver underneath here. You want to get your top plate in, compress the one side of the top plate and get ready to pinch this thing down and get your hand out very quickly. If you can do that quick like that, it should come together without this thing coming apart on you. What I like to do is get the one side of the clip under first and then just work your way around with this. We're just going to give that a tap. The other thing that you can do is if you have a, um, a socket or some type of round tubing or something that you can fit around this, what you can do is put this on a hard surface and drop that tubing and whack the tubing and this thing will all come together real easy. So once you've got your clip back on, basically you're just going to do everything in reverse and reassemble. One thing I want to do while we've got this apart is there's a little bit of material that's uh, coming off of the interior of this clutch bell housing. You can use sandpaper, you can use steel wool, but I just want to go through and clean up the inside of this just ever slightly. This is just some 100 grit, you can use 220, but you just want to go through and you want to clean up any contamination on the inside of the bell housing. This has already been done, but you just want to touch it up a little bit. You're not sanding the surfaces, you just want to remove any contamination that might be on the inside of your bell housing with a little bit of sandpaper. Then what I did is I used some mineral spirits. Another one that's really good to use would be naphtha. I just took our steel wool here and I cleaned up the inside of the bell housing. And then I did the same process, just lightly cleaned up any contamination that might be on our clutch shoes. And then last and final was to take our mineral spirits and to just make sure that we're cleaning up any grease, any grime, anything that could possibly have contaminated our shoes or our bell housing. 
I mean, it could have been something that happened during the manufacture of the product. Somebody handled it with greasy fingers, shipping. You don't know what's been done to this, so it's always a good idea just when you've got this apart to make sure that your two contact surfaces are as clean as they can possibly be. These don't have uh, ball bearings. It just rides on this brass bushing that you see inside here. So use some high quality oil and that bushing will absorb some of this oil. I like to get a little bit on both surfaces. Just be really careful when you're oiling this, guys. The last thing that you want to do is get any oil on the inside of this bell housing because that's where your contact surface is. And you want to make sure you're not over oiling this so it slings oil. That would also be detrimental to the performance. Nice thin layer on the inside there. We're going to drop our shim back into place and then of course just drop our bell housing back on. Put our second clip back on here. There it goes. And that's it. Now in my case, when I put the clip on, there was a little bit of resistance. And when you're done putting this together, you really want to make sure that that clutch bell housing is free from any binding. Now if I take the shim out entirely, I've got some wiggle on that bell housing. So I don't want to remove it. Now what I'm going to do is just take our shim, and I've got some 220 sandpaper. You can use 220 or a little bit finer just to smooth it down. I want to remove just a fraction. I will have only taken this thing down just a few thousandths. Okay, we've taken all our anodization off. Some type of lubricant, oil, a very light, fine layer of grease. That's what this is. You just want to make sure that you're keeping friction down on any contact surfaces. We'll drop our bell housing back on. Make sure that your clip is fully seated. And then check it. This is much better than it was. And... You can't even hear it, but there is just ever so slightly some space in there. Before, when I was turning this, you could hear it grinding because there was pressure being put on that shim. So make sure that your clutch is nice and clean and now it's just ready for installation and performance testing. powerful motor in the world or engine system, but if you have points of friction, that friction in your drive system is constantly robbing whatever power you have. We probably only have three and a half horsepower to work with, which is why I'm so meticulous to make sure that this is an entirely friction-free system. Because those little points of friction, whether it be on the chain, the axle, the drivetrain, the clutch itself, that's all robbing and that's going to steal from the total power that we have. So let's fire this thing up and see if that made a difference or not. Now, if you've watched the video on our RC-powered Rascal scooter here, you may have noticed that at idle previously, during the test runs, the scooter was wanting to constantly pull forward even at a low RPM. And that's because that clutch was trying to engage too early, it was causing friction. And this problem not only robs you of performance, but it actually destroys your clutch because that constant pulling forward motion is now applying a tremendous amount of heat to your clutch bell housing and it's going to prematurely wear. It's going to cause problems with, you know, grip and acceleration. And it's just going to rob the system of performance. Now guys, if you haven't seen our complete radio controlled Rascal Cart build, you're going to want to go back to the previous video and check that one out because you'll see how I built this RC powered Rascal scooter and that's where you'll get to see the actual test drive. Now in the next video, 
We're gonna be digging into the 79cc Predator engine. We are gonna put the absolute best performance mods that we can on this small engine system and get the maximum power that we can and performance from this small system. So if you're not already a subscriber, make sure that you're subscribing now to the channel so that way if you have a small powered engine project, you know exactly what you need to do to gain the maximum performance from your system. So guys, don't forget to leave your comments below if you would like to win the free clutch here, and we'll get this shipped out to you soon after I select a winner. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.